I appreciate your shoehorning me into your schedules like this. Um, I guess one of the things for um, for Paul, um, the you're in the this sort of in between right now. You're um, really uh, in the middle of the uh, Hamilton tour. This this had to have been a blow and a half. You know, it was uh, on the one hand, it it is a serious blow, of course. Uh, but on the other hand. I was I, I was ready for a, a break. You know, this this show is physically uh, and vocally brutal, and um, I, I didn't want the break to be this long. No, right. But when it first happened, I, I like everyone else said, "Oh, two weeks to get this under control, probably three weeks." Yeah, okay. Actually, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I just didn't know it would turn into this. Um, as my mother said yesterday, <laughs> because she is a she's a loner and she loves being a loner. She said, "Is." Is the pandemic still going? <laughs> <laughs> like, mom. She said, yeah, I wouldn't notice. I just, you know, I like to be by myself anyway. And, you know, I don't let people come in my house. I'm like, okay, well, it's still going, mom. So still going. Yeah. So has the pause at least allowed you to uh, maybe chip away at other projects? Um, yeah, that's actually what I'm working on today. Uh, I wrote a musical that is loosely based Ooh. on my experiences working for the Obamas and um, the experience I had traveling to Africa for them and what awakened in me as a black American who thought I knew it all mm -hmm. about what uh, racism and um, sexism, uh, misogyny and homophobia within mm -hmm. all kinds of different communities. What I thought I knew growing up and what I thought I had every right to complain about, so to speak, mm -hmm. when I got to Accra and then Cape Coast and the Elmina Slave Castle, <laughs> different awakening. Mm -hmm. They don't different teach you that either, yeah. What'd you say, Diane? They, they don't it's teach you that. Thing. That's it's right. a spiritual thing that they don't teach. I don't think, I don't think anyone can teach it. So mm -hmm. I had to really reflect on how fortunate I was to even find myself in that situation. Mm -hmm. And situations like that, as I'm sure Diane can attest to, it starts mm -hmm. to reel you back all the way through your ancestors mm -hmm. Right. They, they start speaking it's to so you. It's so present. And yeah. they, right. You're living and passed on. Mm -hmm. Becoming very present. It became very present to me that I wouldn't be here had I not had parents who had done, hmm, I need to go find out exactly what they've done. Mm -hmm. And then I find out about my grandmother and exactly what she'd been through. All oh. the steps that got me to come back to the door of no return. Oh, Lord. So, so I wrote a musical about it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I felt a story like that w couldn't really survive text. I think it needed to have song. Oh, I love it. So I love that's where it. we are. How far along is that project? Uh, it, it's been going on for a while. I, I let it go for a while because the work with the Obamas really was so busy that I, I, I didn't have time to keep pushing it mm -hmm. onto people, throwing it in their laps. But now this time has given me time to really look at the music again. I'm very fortunate being in Hamilton that I'm surrounded with the type of super talented people that can yes. elevate that can that role elevate models music, at every you know? that network and paying off. You know, the network yes. is paying off and they're all looking for something to do. You know, mm -hmm. I've got a sister who's in Come From Away who's gonna be working on it with us. Nice. So we're gonna go into the studio and get these tracks recorded in a way that I can present it to producers, not and not say like, oh, this was a live recording from when we were hanging out in my living room and please excuse <laughs> that that lyric is wrong because she didn't I had just handed it to her and she didn't we're gonna get it. All right, get tight. it right. Yeah. So I was fearful you were um, just beside yourself um, during this lull, but it sounds like the everything's bubbling up still and way to go. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask Diane about was um, you've actually done a virtual, you not only did you produce the um, that adaptation of Long Day's Journey, yeah. um, but played Mary Tyrone. I mean, that's right. yeah. how how I gather that has helped in the in the process of putting this together. I'm not I'm not a stranger to the process, but there's always new um, new issues that come up. Everybody being so much, we're actors. We all have different equipment. We're not 
this is not what we signed on to when we began our journey in the theater. So some people have microphones and lighting and green screens and some people have a cell phone. So it, it's working, working with that is and then Wi-Fi, it's like there's all these other things on top of things that kind of like I was saying at the beginning before Paul joined us is that you, you have all of these dreams of like how you want to make this come alive for people and then mm -hmm. uh, somebody's Wi-Fi gives them a weird noise and right. it, you've never heard it before and now, at least when we did Long Day's Journey, first thing was that we were all very familiar with the text. So the because we were going to produce it on stage and we were shut down before we did performance number one. Okay. So so we we had that already. We had those connections with each other. We didn't have to establish that through an online format. And we were, I guess we were lucky in that we also had gave ourselves a lot of time to, to record it. We, we took almost six weeks to put it together. So when you have like a really short amount of time and you've, it's got to be right on this one day, you can count on it not being right that one yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And as actors, we know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You already have to be adaptable under we the are, old yeah, conditions, sure, no. and now um, yeah. it's it's a totally different animal with this. But it is, it oh. is. But you know, because we had told our folks with um, Long Day that well, we we have a six week period that we're going to be doing this in. We could like they cleared their slate for that six weeks, but these are working folks and they have to just go for whatever comes their way and they mm -hmm. can't be available until, you know, the director <laughs> is, right. is satisfied that we've got exactly the right take and we've got exactly the right acoustics. And mm -hmm. so that puts mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on it. Yeah. So okay. it, if, if anything I've learned, it's that maybe this type of project should include a six week preparation Prep to do sure. next time instead of um i well we tried to do it in two and we ran into some things so. and if the right things are going you may have to get good at this yeah yeah and, and the way things are going this may be our medium for a while so I, you know i in I've been actually thinking about what works well for this medium. And I've started writing something that's really like leans in on the whole, like we're all in boxes and we're all trying to talk to each other. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, you can see into those boxes and see what, where people live and who they live with. And right. <laughs> all of a sudden you have like, six different stages that you're dealing with instead of the one. And it's kind of interesting. So I've kind of been playing with that. Well, I bet the younger folks are probably adjusting to it better than uh, people in my demographic. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. But, we, but we've got this and this. Yep. And that's invaluable. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. One yeah. other thing I wanted to that's ask about going. Long Day's journey was that, um, it must be interesting taking this play on because uh, the Bryants in comparison with the Tyrones right. uh, are, are the Cleavers as far as a normal family, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the Beaver and, and Wally and, and, and all of that. Yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're pretty, they're, their sins of omission are different from the Tyrones, but they may, there may be some things there underneath the surface that contributed to it that. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, I, a, it's a light comedy, but there is nothing light about the situation mm -hmm. they find themselves in. Right, it's just a matter of tone. And that's where your director and your designers have to have that meeting of the minds with the playwright. Yep. Because actually I think the Bryant and the Tyrones it, it's just a matter of tone. Yep. 
of how we're approaching these very similar things. Ronnie has some issues with alcohol. Huge issues. With we play it, it. We play it for something different, but certainly mm. there are moments in the immediate family where, boom, it hits right. pretty hard. So it's just a matter of time. It's, it's going to come around eventually. That ball's yeah. going to fall into that slot of the roulette wheel. And mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And Evie has her, she's clinging to that memory, a uh, fanciful memory of what her father was and what their family was and finding it pushed back at her that no it wasn't it wasn't right. quite the way you remembered it wasn't that rosy family thing you're trying to perpetrate in your own life that's right she, as felicia says um the making evie a teacher mm. and and showing a little bit of that in the play mm. it really grounds the idea that she's all about order right order in right. a world where chaos is what keeps the engine going Right. Chaos is what keeps the world turning. But what kind of order is she trying to maintain? She's right. not trying to set things in the right order. She's trying to hold on to this crystallized mm -hmm. image and mm -hmm. polish it and make sure that this is what we think about everything. And yeah. she's even trying to pass it on to the next generation. So. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, she represents for me a lot of teachers that they haven't had the time to teach themselves. They haven't had the time to like up their skill level and bring themselves into this, into this new world. And so, um, you know, the situation that we're having now where teachers having to use this medium to teach classes to six-year-olds, this this is going to take some new skills. This is right. going to take some new, new ways of approaching things. And um, just the way you set Evie up with her index cards and her, <laughs> like she found the most retrograde Malcolm X quotation she could possibly right. find. Because she's been, she's been repeating that one for uh, 20 right? years. <laughs> right. But just like we're told the Constitution is a living document, mm -hmm. history and what we, like what you said, the teachers have to up their game. The, it should be, teaching should be a living thing. Yes, and, exactly. And you should continue to dig around and, and be bold and brave enough to say this other thing that Malcolm mm -hmm. X said. Mm -hmm. And yeah. say this other thing that MLK yeah. said. Right. But she's, and you know, I, I, my mother's generation is the generation that said, this is what we're teaching. She's staying with SAFE. And, our, and, and to know we did a good job is to know that they can repeat it back to us. Yeah, exactly. Without question. And, and this was written before events. Yeah. I mean, this is pre-Michael Brown. This is yeah. um, pre-George. But not, not pre-everything. This right. is, what right. time, where, where do you see this family? What year do you see this family in? Well, I see it as present day, which means that if we put it back up today, mm. so we, I just want to see how things would sit, you know, even with yeah. this upcoming uh, reading presentation, if the director called me up and said, you know, this in light of what's going on, mm. feeling strange to us. And since it's not 20 years back, it's only about five or six, it's a little, mm -hmm. we don't want it to seem dated. I would absolutely go in and say, tell me, let's look at it. Which part is it that's, and let me give you, let me help you. I think there's a brief mm -hmm. Obama reference in here somewhere, isn't there? Yeah, or? which which that one holds because they live up the, where their house is, it's yep. up the street from where the Obama's home. What were you thinking, Diane, when I said that? Are you thinking, no, just let it, let it land? I, I think so. I yeah. didn't, I didn't want to like, at first, I didn't know how receptive you'd be to like rewriting anything, and I, even the like smallest thing. There, there was one change we made because our actor, our, that plays Jesse, isn't bald, so mm -hmm, we changed mm -hmm. that yeah, to yeah, like yeah, I like yeah. the new haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, the there was one section that I felt like, oh, that does feel a little dated to me, and that was the one piece was when. Evie said she got to get these kids thinking about about their history, and I feel like today That's we're being exactly. led by the youth. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so then, so 
I would say if you can swim in that, you know, snaking yeah. Colorado River in the right. Grand Canyon and see like, what take can you come together with the actor on that might shine a light on the fact that Evie's even saying that? Does exactly. It, are, are we going exactly. to, are we going to shine a light on the fact that she's out of touch? That's right. That's and does right. the line that's, now mean that? Right. That's, that's what, that's what I, that's what, how I resolved it for myself. And that's, Good. that's the direction we're taking. It's like, I don't I feel, you know, it's, it's right. And it's written right. And, you know, 50 years from now, somebody will be saying things this same way, you know, yes. I just, I hope we're not having quite the same conversation about gay gay sons and brothers and hiding that mm -hmm. that fact of life from family i hope we're not having that conversation 50 years from now i feel like maybe maybe we won't i feel like maybe i'm, I'm hopeful for that but, but in 50 years then this would be a distinct period piece yeah yeah and then, it, and then it would sit in a period where people would look back at that and go wow you know? yeah hmm. yeah wow. That's but the way they but work. for yeah. now, we've set it in the present. Yeah, please. Yeah, and we're working within the confines, and I think I think those are. It's a great little room to be in. Good. Yeah, that makes me happy. Yeah, and then the interracial angle with Christian. Um, mm -hmm. How soon? How soon in the process of this percolating in you, Paul? Um, did that feel like the what was going to be the trigger to the the changes? in the family and then and the stirring up of some of the dynamics that show up when Christian shows up. Well, I'll say two things about that. Number one, the big secret of the show is that none of this is really what happened in my real life. <laughs> Actually, the reverse. I was going to let you handle that one. Uh, no, that's just totally fine. Actually, the reverse is what happened. I was living right. in Stockholm and I was Christian who was brought home to this Swedish family. Oh, wow. And what I noticed was I didn't have to understand every word they were saying. I knew them all. And I said, now this is what people mean when they say something has to have universality. Mm -hmm. I found myself a stranger in a strange land. I found myself trying to do my best to be, feel welcome and be, be generous and open to this family. And then it started dawning on me that Magnus had not told them who I was. <laughs> wow. Right. And so I thought, I can't, really I can't really tell or sell that story back yeah. in America, but I know mm -hmm. how to, I know how to write that opposite. person and this person mm -hmm. in the other way around. So that's mm -hmm. the first thing that happened. The other thing that happened was um, Christian used to be right at the top of the show with Jesse. There was a mm -hmm. whole other section of the show, and it was some great dramaturgy by Felicia that said, you know, you're making it about, it, it shouldn't be about Jesse and Christian. It's about mm -hmm. Eve. Mm -hmm. And so Christian can come in, Christian can be the last straw. You know, Ronnie comes, mm -hmm. Jesse comes, and he's not being the way she wants him to be. Nina keeps poking her head in. Earl's not there. <laughs> so there's, there's a, I feel like Earl actually is a real tangible yeah. character in the show. Right. He just doesn't come on stage. And then this guy shows up. Yeah. So that was uh, some dramaturgy with Felicia that was some real late night rewriting to get okay. that together. Yeah. She also, you know, initially I had eight locations in the show. Okay, and, thank and God she, that Felicia got calling, third time. She, kept, she, kept, <laughs> she kept calling me once she took the gig and she said, yeah. So we were starting rehearsal in two weeks and she called me up around two in the morning and said, you know, I was thinking these eight locations, um, I'm in meetings with the set designer. Well, I'm wondering if you can get it down to four locations. Mm -hmm. We had a, you know, my sturm and drong and all of this, and I <laughs> stayed up all night and kill your baby, kill your baby. It to, I made it work. I got it together and I gave it to her, and she read it right away and mm -hmm. called me right away and said, "This is wonderful, wonderful." And I said, "Oh, good, we're done." And she said, "Yeah, I, I wonder if you can get it down to two. <laughs> <laughs> and so she just kept tricking me, and then I knew what she was doing. Yeah. And she said, "The reason I just wanted to ease you down that road is because the house is a character. Mm -hmm. yeah. The mm -hmm. painting of the parents in the background. That's mm -hmm. what when you were talking about Evie polishing that same crystal. Mm -hmm. That's what that that painting will never. That painting will be in that house until mm -hmm. that house is torn down. Yeah." Yeah. That will never go. So she's like, there's so many opportunities to place things in the house and use the house as almost like Evie's shield. Yeah. 
you know, don't come on her battlefield. <laughs> right. But if she's got to go to an airport and they, they go to a bar and the, the focus floats. The focus is always on, she's there maintaining the hearth. She's maintaining. She's, there. she's the little soldier. Her little spot on the stairs is, you know, she's maintaining. Yeah. Watching. So yeah, at the same time, she's the one who ends up evolving. Well, what better place to evolve than in your own ecosystem, right? Yeah. She's created it, and now she must let it put her in a chrysalis phase. She's, she seems to come to terms with Christian before she even, the last scene when she sees uh, Christian and Jesse together mm -hmm. on, the, on the pullout couch. It seems to, it seems like she's accepted him before that even happens work, work with that work with that see see how you can tease it back and hold it back take see what you can do with the, i know what scene you're talking about yeah and the commonality of religion i think she needs mm -hmm. to sleep i think she needs to sleep on it so mm -hmm. if she can remain you know mm. i heard you but she's not it's not like, oh yeah, I got it. We're both, oh, I see. Yeah. I think she needs to, I, because I think she needs to come and see the sign from God, like the sign from above is mm -hmm. seeing them on that fold out mm -hmm. route. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the knockout punch. So, and then looking and seeing Ronnie's painting and seeing like she is surrounded by love. She has a whole new family. Right. She, she got exactly what she asked for. Right. <laughs> she just didn't get it the way she wanted to get right. it. Right, she didn't get it the way she wanted to get it though. Right, but she yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. And the fact that you had these disparate characters, as strong as the central character of Evie is, um, the way you were able to get personalities and not just stock figures mm -hmm. in the other characters, mm -hmm. that, that must have taken a little while to, to fine tune that. Uh, to fine tune it, yes. To throw them in there, no, because they're all me. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. As any I love the did. bid whisk game. I love that's my favorite, favorite, favorite thing. That bid whisk game. I'm so glad to hear you say that Woo! because so many producers tried to get me to cut that scene out. What? Because on the oh! page, on the page, it would be like my friend Nikhil is over here, um, half listening but not listening. But he's uh, he's up from a particular cultural background as well, and anyone who would, I'm sure there are games or things you guys have in your culture that are different that. People are, oh, I never played that. So mm -hmm. people who read that on the page, they mm -hmm. say, I don't understand what's happening in the game. And I'm like, it doesn't matter it doesn't whether matter. you understand because it's what's mm -hmm. happening. It's how the game is used as a, yeah, we've been talking, right. but now we're going to go right. to war. It's now Game of Thrones now. Us. We're going to see who we are here. See who we are. Game. Well, it's and like the Mahjong scene in um, Crazy Rich Asians when the mm -hmm. uh, prospective daughter-in-law goes up against the, so. the, the tiger mother-in-law. Because there's much more behind it than who wins the hand. Because right. that's a, the, the fate you of the card. The fate of the card. The it's, game. it's how you play that game. Absolutely. You know, Evie would, Evie would respect Ronnie a lot more if she played well but didn't mm -hmm. have a good hand. Mm -hmm. If you just didn't have a good hand, you know, you got dealt a bad hand, and that's a metaphor for life. Oh, you man. play the hand that you're dealt. But when you don't play the hand that you're dealt, mm -hmm. and you're not paying attention, mm -hmm. it's just what she's looking for to come at her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. But that yeah. just helps establish the relationships. Oh, yeah. So beautifully without exposition. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So really take, I don't know how far you are in and working it, but I would say also there's things I will put like, uh, Jesse and um, uh, Nina, when they win the hand, mm -hmm. and they go, they go ham celebrating. Yep, yep. Go, go as far as they should mm -hmm. go as far as they want until Evie breaks it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You know, there's there should be no sort of end to it where they go, oh, okay, we're done throwing it in your face. That could last all night. <laughs> right. They they gonna live off that win all right. night. They're gonna dine out on that one. Oh yeah. Until and, she snatches that turkey leg out of their hand. And to and Tony also for me is like he's a he's a smaller character, but he's not a smaller character. I think he's the character I identified with the most because he's such an He's so narcissistic and he's such a brat. And yet, like, you know, Jesse is like near to tears. And so Tony thinks to comfort him by talking about Tony. 
So right. it's just <laughs> like really funny to see that dynamic, you know, yeah. that younger brother who's basically like manipulating the older brother. I haven't seen that before. Well, and also keep in mind, which I know you have, you have, you have mathematically figured this out. Tony was the surprise baby. Right. So he doesn't have in him the memory of all the stuff that went down. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know about, he wasn't there for that stuff with Ronnie on the staircase and the thing. He, he wasn't mm -hmm. there for Jesse getting beat up by the dad in the, in the backyard. He, he, yeah. that, he doesn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. So he's just, like you said, he's just. Right. I stir in the pot. My world. Uh, you, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And he's the little prince of the family, so he, exactly. he, he can't do any wrong, right? Right. Yep. Yep. He's just as bratty as he want to be. That's Love right. him. Love him. That's why this good. works um, beyond light comedy, really. Oh, yeah. If it was a movie, it would get marketed with all the, the laughter and the, the one-liners, mm -hmm. um, and it, it wouldn't cover the half of it. Wouldn't well, cover we're the going half. in that direction without saying too much. That's what we're... We're working okay. on that, actually. Okay. We'll talk Absolutely. more offline. Yeah. yeah. I love how I love what a hold you have on it. It's very clear to me that you've got a great hold on it. Yeah, I'm excited to hear more. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, perfect place to end. I really appreciate you okay. both putting me into your day. And um, well, great. It's been yeah. so like it. Are there dates in an email somewhere of when? So I make sure I'm, you know, uh, tune in and. I think um, Sharon probably knows that. It's the 24th of July and the 1st of this, August. I think there's also around the 17th, somewhere around there, but I can, I can send that easy enough a link. Please do, please do. And I'll just sit you know, silently like Sharon and Seth and just be invisible and watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you both. This is you no, I'm right, super nervous. Don't be. <laughs> After this, you should feel great. The playwright has blessed you. I love, yeah. the, I love that you did it. I love that you've mm. got them all. You're holding it all. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's, right. that's great. You're yeah. taking good care Thank of them. You. I love these characters. Thank you for writing this play. Yeah. It was my pleasure. Yeah. Friday the twenty fourth and Saturday the first, seven okay, thirty p.m. Great. Eastern time, Paul. Okay, great. And Diane, email me if you have any questions. Okay, I will. Yeah. All right. But you got the, once I heard you say you love the bid with scene, I'm like, oh, well, she understands all the math. <laughs> if, you, if, you're not, if you're not daunted by that scene, then you right. got the math of the show. <laughs> okay. All okay. right. Great. Thanks for right, the guys. encouragement. Take, Take care. care everybody. Bye, Take care. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.